What's up and welcome to another Revit video. In this video, we're looking at new features for Revit 2020.2, very exciting. Not a lot of updates, but a few that be nice to be aware of. So right now I've got a basic level floor plan. And what I'll be looking at now is one of the new features being, if you go to the analyze tab, we have, we, since 2020, we've had path of travel and reveal obstacles. I've got a 2020.1 video that covers reveal obstacles. It just shows all the obstacles that the path of travel is going to avoid. That's just a toggle on and off. But if you go to path of travel, this, the, having the path of travel tool is nothing new. Um, let's say, for example, I wanted to get from this shower out to this exit door. As soon as I click the start and finish, Revit populates with a line that takes you from that shower to that exit door. So again, that's nothing new, but the part that is new is now after I draw that line initially, I can select a line and up here at the top, you'll see I have an add waypoint. So if you wanna take this right now, if, if I'm not hovered over that line, you can see my cursor has a, a cross to it. I can't do anything. So I'm, I'm only limited to affecting path of travel lines with this add waypoint. So I'm gonna zoom in here so you can see it a little better, but as I hover over this line, you could see that I'd, I could add a waypoint, a, a, a destination, if you will, to this line. So as soon as I click, you can see I have that waypoint added to that path of travel line. And great, nothing happened at this point, but now what this allows me to do is it's another point that I can use to push and pull and essentially add a destination to this path of travel. So maybe I wanna straighten this out a little more per code, it needs to be straighter. And I've said before, I wouldn't necessarily use this tool for your life safety plans, because I certainly don't. I would use this to get a quick idea of your path of travel, whether it's common travel or max travel distance, whatever it might be. But adding these waypoints is a better way of controlling how you might exit a space or move from one space and calculate the distance. So you can see, you can add them and delete them just like that. I have this line selected. I have the option of choosing delete path of travel waypoint. Again, I can't do anything until I hover over the waypoints that I've added. And so then I can remove those and I get the same result that I've had before. Delete, delete, and you can see that's the same result as I had before. So new new waypoints added to path of travel. It's, it's something good. Uh, the next thing. Let's go ahead, I'm at a, uh, I've got a basic 3D view here, but what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna create a schedule. There's a few nice changes that go with schedules. So I'll go to the view tab, I'll go to schedules, I'll do schedules and quantities, and I'm just gonna keep this a multi-category schedule. I'll hit okay, and I'm gonna add a category and family and type. So what this is gonna do is I'm gonna get a, a list of all the different elements in the entire project and they'll be categorized by category and family and type and I just want to get an exhaustive list in a schedule to show you the new features so let's go to sorting and I'll sort them by category and then by family and type and I want to make sure I see all the elements just because I want this to be a long schedule I'll hit OK we've got this schedule here it's long it's exhaustive it's kind of ridiculous you wouldn't necessarily make a schedule like this but for the for the new features, I want to show this off. So I click a cell. As soon as I do, you can see there's this nice blue highlight that shows my current selection, like the current row selection. Really helpful, very, very simple. It's, it's, it's just nice to have. It's in aesthetics. I, again, I think most of these schedule updates are aesthetics, but they really do help you read. So with 2020.1, we got striped rows. So I can click on this and you can see I get gray stripes at every other row. Very nice, helpful to, to be able to read longer schedules. And that's just a toggle on and off. But the new thing with 2020.2 is this freeze header. And so what this will do is the header, header is everything that is above all of the schedule items. So in this case, it's the category and the family. It's basically the tops of all the rows and the title. So what I can do is I can, if I use the freeze header, these will stay in place. And to better show that, as soon as I start scrolling in this schedule, you can see I've, I don't know where my header is. And maybe I'm so far down in the schedule, you see how ridiculously long this schedule is, that maybe 
I, I get all the way down here and it's, it's got so many different columns. I don't know what each column is anymore. Well, let's scroll back to the top and the freeze header, what it will do is it's going to do exactly what it says, freeze the header. So as soon as I check freeze the header, as I scroll, the, the header stays. It's essentially frozen. It's staying right there so I can continue to read it. Now, moving forward, I don't think I will ever have another schedule where I don't have that on because it's so helpful to be able to have that header frozen and to see it constantly. That's kind of the whole point of this. It's like, why would you not? So again, very simple, great addition to schedules. So now I'll go back to 3D. And there's a couple more things that we want to see here. So if I go to my visibility graphics and I go all the way down to site, and you can, you can actually go and press S, and it'll take you to S, imagine that. And I'll go site, and now there's this new internal origin built into the site. And if I check this, I'll expose the internal origin, and what this will do is it will tell me where my, the origin point for my model is. And you know, I have mixed feelings about this, to be honest, because this is something, the origin, that's, it's been something that's always been there in your project, whether you can see it or not. And most of the time, you don't care about it. And most of the time, I don't care about it. And 90% and of the time, it doesn't matter. Now, it will be nice whenever you're trying to coordinate with different disciplines to try and either match up that origin or just make sure that you're on the same page. Um, but beyond being able to see where the origin is it doesn't do anything for you because i can't i can't move it or do anything like that with this with just exposing it and, and showing it through the visibility graphics i can't do anything like that you're gonna have to go to the the project base point and survey point to be able to move this origin it's just displaying where it is now that's all fine. I, I don't really care about that, to be honest. I, again, I don't really use it all that much. I don't, I've worked with a few shared sites, but it's not a big deal most of the time. So unfortunately, by default, it seems as though this origin is exposed and it's visible by default. And I don't necessarily like that. So what I'm going to end up doing in most of my views and view templates is going to the site and then just turning that off. I don't necessarily need it. but. This is a new features video. It's just something I wanted to show you that that is a new feature. You can now expose the origin because we always had an origin. We just didn't know where it was necessarily. So it's there. And so finally, I think this is one of the most exciting updates with Revit 2020.2. So I've got a, a few different floor plan options here. There's nothing all that special, but I'm in a 3D view. And if I go to the view cube, I can right click and I'm, I'm in an orthographic view. And I now have this option to choose perspective, which, well, let, let's guess what that does. It puts my view into a perspective view. And so I can do everything like I normally would in a regular 3D view, but now I have, I'm in a perspective view. And I can scroll around, I can orbit around, I can select this chair and orbit about this chair and start to get in here, I can zoom in. Uh, something to note is that depending on where your mouse is, is where you'll zoom. So if I my mouse is over here to the right, I will zoom to the right. If it's over to the left, I will zoom to the left. That's nice to know. Um, most of the time, I'm not gonna use this part of the tool, but perhaps the most exciting part of the perspective is that now if you see over here under the view cube, there's, we've, we've had this option before with just the standard navigation wheel, but now as soon as you change this to perspective, you have this paper airplane icon. And what this will do is if you click it, it'll allow you to fly around, which this is awesome. So as soon as you know you're, you've are you selected that paper airplane, you can see my mouse cursor has changed to arrows, like arrows pointing different directions. And this works with left and right click. As soon as I click and hold it, I can start to look around. If you're familiar with the SketchUp tool look, it's got the eyes. It's essentially the same thing. I can just look around. And so again, this from this view up here, it looks kind of silly. So what I want to do is I've, I've got the fly tool. And so what I can do is fly to different points around the model to get a better perspective, hence the perspective view. So while I am clicking either and clicking and holding left click or right click, I can orbit and look around like I said before. But if I'm if I use the arrow keys, 
on the keyboard or the WASD if you're a gamer or if you're familiar with the concept W moves you forward, S moves you backward, A moves you left, and D moves you right, just like the same key set up in the arrow keys. So I like to use WASD because it's simple, it's on my left side, but while I'm clicking and holding the left or right mouse button to look around, I can press W, and now you can see I start to fly in the direction of my cursor which is really helpful. And now I can start to really get into these spaces and I know it looks kind of distorted right now, but as I get down there, it will start to look a little better. You can speed this up by scrolling. So scrolling is a good way to zoom in and out. And so I can quickly zoom in and click on the fly once again and start to get actually into my space and I can start to see what my space would look like from this perspective in a perspective view. And I can start to move through doors and all of that and you get this really nice looking effect. Again, some of it's distorted, I think maybe because of the number of elements I have in this view, but I'll scroll out and I'm gonna change this back to orthographic. So now I get the basic view again and I'm just gonna select this last, this last floor plan right here. I will isolate that. If you notice when you're in the perspective view that things look a bit distorted and weird, you can always zoom extents, which can be achieved by double clicking the middle mouse button. And that's going to zoom to the extents of everything in that view, which is really nice. So what that's going to do is it's, I found it's going to fix the perspective a bit because you, you saw before it's a bit distorted. So now it looks like I'm, I'm looking at things like they should be, like in a normal perspective view. And I can start to move and I'm scrolling again with the, the scrolling wheel to get in there pretty quick. But now you could really see that I'm able to get into the space itself, fly around and look around very quickly at what's in my model. And I can go from space to space, see what kind of elements I have in my bathroom, see if the lockers look good, see if everything looks good in 3D and if really get down into the different spaces pretty quickly to see if it's doing and looking and functioning how I want it to. So I really like this tool. I can't say that I will use it all that much either because I use Enscape all the time. Enscape is like really, it's literally built as if it were this perspective tool in Revit, but it's meant for presentations. It's, it functions the same way. It's got the same movement keys, but if you're just in Revit and you don't have Enscape or anything like that, this is a great way to really get into your space quickly and see what's going on in there and see if you like it. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I sure hope you learned something and enjoy these new features for Revit 2020.2. If you did, please demolish that like button. It really helps me. And if you would, please subscribe. I'll have lots more videos like this coming out in the very new future. Also moving into Dynamo videos, Inkscape videos. I know a new version with of Dynamo 2.3 came out along with Revit 2020.2. I will be covering that very soon. So I sure hope you enjoy this video again. Hope you have a wonderful day and thanks for watching.